The first thing we need to do in order to get our deployment online and ready to go is to actually deploy NSX Manager. Now, you might see the NSX Manager sitting right here, but I have to, I had to get rid of him. He was uh, being a little bit of a pain. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Register VM. I'm going to deploy an OVA. Click on Next. Come in here, I'm going to do host 2 nsxmgr one I'm going to click in here and I'm going to go drag, grab the file that I want to use, which is going to be right here underneath VMware. Right there, click on Open. Click on Next. I'm going to choose the QNAP appliance. Click Next. I'm going to agree to the end user license. I'm going to click next. I'm going to power automatically and the dev place I'm going to connect to is VMware Lab trunk. Click next. Now this is where I need to go ahead and populate some information. So the, C the admin policy will be capital P at sign SSW0RD 1234. Same thing with the privilege mode. And then networking piece will be, host name will be uh, host2-nsxmgr 10.0.0.20 slash 24 mask. 10.0.0.1 is our gateway. DNS will be 10.0.0.0.254. And then lab.local is our search list. I'm going to enable NTP and Click next and then finish. It's going to take a little bit of time for that to get populated, so I'm going to pause while the upload is happening. All right, so now that our server is completely deployed, it's actually been quite a bit of time since I came in here and looked at it. So let's go ahead and host to NSX Manager. I'm going to go ahead and log in with the password that we set during the initial deployment. And excellent, that's a, great, that's a great sign. So the next thing for me to do would be actually to jump back into my management device, which is going to be .51. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ping. It's going to be host, and it's going to DC1, NSX, MGR1. And you know what? This guy is, yeah, he's connected to it. So he should be able to reach out and ping it. Did I give it the right IP address? Let me just make sure that I give it the right IP address. He's got, oh, 20. Okay, not that big of a deal. I can fix that. So it's got 21. I've configured him with 21 and not 20. Oh, wait a minute. Did I? I can go fix that real quick. Let me jump back over here to my main system. Whoops, wrong, it's the wrong, wrong setup here. Let me jump back over here to here and let me go ahead and do a question mark and I'm going to say set the manager, nope, I need to go to enable and then the password for that and then I need to go to configure, <laughs> configure terminal, very Cisco like right and I need to set the interface management and then the IP address here will be IP address here will be 10.0.0.21 and then I'm going to go ahead and write Right, memory. Wow, very Cisco like, even though it's a VMware box. All right, so now that's been taken care of. If I go back over here and close this out and refresh that, it's got both IP addresses. I'm actually going to have to get rid of that somehow. Let me go in here and do a show. Whoops, click inside here. It's going to be a get. Uh, actually, let me exit out of privilege mode. Let's log back in and do this question mark, it's going to be a get manager
manager. Oops. Oh, I forgot to do that. That's not what I wanted to do. I make that mistake every once in a while where I accidentally close. I hit control W because it's a tab capability. Let me go ahead and log back in. Take care of this real quick. Get manager. It's going to be a show IP show interface management. Okay. Oh, it's got 21 as a secondary address. Okay. So I need to go to enable and type in a password for this. Go to global config and then interface MGMT and say is the no no uh, IP address of 10.0.0.20 slash 24 and we will do a we go ahead and say no IP address of 10.0.0.21 slash 24 as well. And then we're gonna set IP address here will be 10.0.0.21 slash 24. And we'll come back to here. We'll do a show interface management. There we go. Now it's set up the way that it needs to be. I'm gonna do a write mem. There we go. Let's go ahead and close this out. Refresh this again. There it goes. Let's go back over here to our device and we will minimize this. Hit this. Hit the up arrow. Ten zero zero twenty one should be there. There it goes. Excellent. So now I should be able to open up a new web browser and type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash DC one dash NSX manager one dot lab dot local. And that's a great sign. Give that a couple seconds to process, and voila, we are at the virtual appliance management. Next thing for me to do is admin in with the password. And then what we need to do is go to view summary. We really just need to watch, see how much utilization is going on. Is the server online? Is it done processing? Is all the management components running that need to be running? That type of stuff. And they are. So you'll notice that when you install NSX Manager directly, whether it's NSX V Manager or NSX T Manager, when you deploy it to the ESXi host itself, you get a lot better re resource utilization. So click on the Manage tab, come down here to NSX Management Service, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on Edit. And one of the things I'm going to do real quick is I'm actually going to go back to my main host, which is right here. And I'm going to click inside of here and I'm going to do a question mark, click inside of it, question mark. I'm going to do a, a ping, or I'm sorry, an NS lookup. Do NS lookup. I may have to exit out here, log back in real quick. I'm going to do an NS lookup. Is that an option? Ping, I guess it's not. Ping, and I'm going to ping, it's going to be dc1-vcsa1.lab.local. And he can ping it, which means that if we were to do a control C on that and do a show question mark and let's see, show configuration. No, show. Anyway, uh, I just want to make sure that the actual, I want to make sure that NSX Manager had DNS configured on it so that it would know where to point. Because if, if you plug in an IP address right here, or I'm sorry, a host name, like if I plugged in this right here, would it know how to look that up? And that's one thing you have to make sure. Administrator vSphere.local, and then click on OK. It should be able to hit the SDK for the lookup service, and it can. So that should work out all right. And it'll take a couple of moments for it to do its thing, and then the lookup service will be working. All right, there we go. I'm gonna click on Edit. 
and the vCenter server DC1 vCSA. And this one's going to be administrator at vSphere.local with the password. And there's a certificate for the vCenter lookup. Now, now that I've done this, the next thing that'll end up happening is I will have to go back over to vCenter and I'll have to be pay, I'll have to wait patiently for the integration to happen. If I click down here in this area right here, we'll have networking and security pop up. If I go here, you'll see networking and security pop up here. Networking and security is going to be how we go about doing all of our whiz bang wow stuff. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to go and down here to administration and where it has client plugins right now we don't see that one showing up so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to refresh sometimes it helps to refresh and it just might take a couple of minutes so I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to log out real quick and log back in to see if that has been enough time for it to do its thing you may have to wait a few minutes in order for this to work let's go ahead and log back in real quick and see where we are at. Okay, so the client plugin hasn't been populated yet. And if it's not, that's okay. That is not a big, okay, there it is. Now it got added, you can see it right here, NSX user interface plugin. And if we were to, up, oh, and that's a great sign. I'm gonna go ahead and click on one to the right, and you can see plugin NSX user interface plugin has been successfully deployed. Refresh browser, and after a couple of moments, we go back up here to vSphere client, and networking and security shows up. And if we click down here, we can see networking and security shows up here. Now, as you can tell, this is actually uh, very much a vCenter centric configuration, meaning that you have to be inside of vCenter in order to configure this stuff, or NSXT you do not. So I'm actually going to go ahead and close this guy out and I'm going to go ahead and click on administration down here at the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and add the licensing since I'm right here. Click on licenses. So we need to add a license. Right now this license won't work. If I try to go to deploy this license it won't work. So I'm going to click on assets and we can see solution. go to solutions we can see NSX licenses here, right? It says one license. It actually will not allow you to install this. If we go to assign license, it, it there's zero capacity, right? So it won't actually let you do any work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab a license. I'm gonna grab the NSX license here. I'm gonna go over here to licenses, add a new license. I'm going to copy and paste this license into vSphere right here, click next. This is going to be the NSX license, name it appropriately, and we can do up to a thousand CPUs. Click next and then finish. Okay, now that he's been added, I get to go back over to assets, solutions, and assign license. I get to associate NSX license. You can see that there's a thousand CPUs there. Click on OK and voila. Now that I have deployed NSX manager, I have gone and associated it to vCenter server. vCenter server has grabbed it. I'm going to go ahead and go to the menu tab and down networking and security. And then we have our NSX user interface. This is what we're going to be spending a significant amount of time on walking through. So pretty cool stuff there. It's going to take a couple of minutes for it to discover everything and it finds the NSX manager 100021 and all of that good stuff. So in the next video, I'm actually gonna walk you through the installation and upgrade process. This will take a while. I'm gonna walk you through all the bits that you need to be aware of and get that all squared away so that we can have a fully deployed operation. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.